Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, so today uh, we will uh, discuss about uh, AB hypothesis testing. Um, let me just share my screen. Mm. Right. Is my screen visible? All right. Um, so what, what's a hypothesis testing and why do we need it? Right, this is the uh, objective of today's tutorial. Uh, so what's a hypothesis, right? A hypothesis is a proposed uh, explanation or prediction of a phenomena or a set of observations are based on uh, a set of facts. The, you, you proposed uh, something uh, to uh, convince someone, right? Uh, so in the context of ABC testing and scientific research, hypothesis serves as uh, a tentative statement that can be tested through experimentation or it can be observation to determine its validity. Uh, so, uh, a hypothesis typically takes uh, two forms um, based on uh, a change or variation that's expected to have an impact on a specific metric or outcome, right? Uh, the, the, the first um, hypothesis, that's the null hypothesis, uh, is the default assumption that there is a significance uh, there is no no significant difference or effect between the variants being tested. Uh, for example, um, in uh, in healthcare, uh, there is already a developed medicine uh, for something for treating something, and then uh, someone improves that medicine and claims it's better than the, the, first, the, the first version of that medicine, right? So how can we prove that? Uh, for that, we need to do uh, experimentation, right? So to do that experimentation, uh, we need to have two categories, um, what you call it, the, the controlled and the treatment or version A or and version B, right? Having those, uh, we will uh, collect data by taking uh, population, I mean, by taking sample from the population. Usually, it has to be um, equal, the sample size for version A and for version B, and it has to be uh, normalized um, or it has to be randomly selected, right? Once we do that, um, we try to uh, find or we, we try to verify that if version B performs uh, uh, than version A, right? So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up our hypothesis or our assumption. So the null hypothesis is the actual truth at the moment, right? Which is uh, version A is the better one. That, that's the null hypothesis, right? Which means um, if, you, if you change the, the version A, there will not be any significant uh, in B. That's, that's the null hypothesis. So the default assumption is that there is no significant difference or effect between the, uh, the, the two versions being tested. So it suggests that any observed difference do we would be due to a chance or random variation right the alternative test is that uh, it proposed the change or the variation will have a measurable effect on the outcome being tested that means uh, that the second medicine will perform uh, better than the, uh, the the first medicine based on a, a measurable metric Right, that can be like, for example, if it's um, 
a pain relief medicine, uh, the, the, the measure would be the time it takes to relieve that pain. If, for example, medicine A takes two hours, uh, and if medicine B takes an hour, uh, that, that's how we measure it, the, the, the time. That's a measurable um, uh, API uh, for, for that uh, test, for that test. So it represents researchers or experimenters, um, experimenters uh, expectation or prediction. That's the alternative test. Uh, so the, the steps that we um, need to take after formulating the hypothesis testing uh, will be starting the experiment, right? So the, the first, uh, let's just see an example, right? Uh, in the context of A-B testing, uh, we try to uh, perform a b t a b test uh, for our landing page for our landing page so the hypothesis could be uh, there is no significance uh, in conversion rate between the original or the controlled uh, the, the the controlled group and the modified which is the treatment group uh the the null hypothesis says that there will not be a, 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 a difference in conversion rate conversion rate means something la that leads to um an extra step uh, for example if in your landing page if you are putting a product and if there is a buy a button or add to cart button uh clicking that button what we call it conversion right it converts from the, the landing page to uh, the, the, the cart or to the purchasing uh, page right so the, the objective is to increase that conversion rate right so the null hypothesis will be there will not be any significant conversion rate between the original landing page and the modified landing page uh, the the modified landing page might, might be a I mean, the, the, the changes or the variations might be lots of things. For example, you might change the, the header, uh, its color or its text, or even the button, the, the button size or the button color. Um, a, yeah, you can modify lots of things, but one at a time, but one at a time. For example, if we change the, the buy now, button with a green background uh, to a red background right and then we want to study if changing the uh, green background will uh, increase the conversion rate uh, from uh, if we if we change it to a red background right so that that, that, that that's the uh, uh, null hypothesis the null hypothesis no significance difference in some metric between the uh, control group and the treatment group in, in this case the control group will be the original landing page and the treatment group will be the landing page and the alternative hypothesis is that modifying the landing page will lead to a higher conversion rate compared to the original rate that means modifying the background color of the buy button from green to red will uh, lead to a high conversion rate that's that's the alternative hypothesis so how do we determine that we we need to uh, do uh, statistical tests uh, depending on the the data uh, we will have uh, different tests to get the <clears throat> the p value the level of significance or confidence and i mean interval of confidence um yeah so once the hypothesis is established that means once we determine the the, the null hypothesis and the uh, alternative hypothesis the ap test is conducted to uh, by collecting data and determine whether there is enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the uh, alternative hypothesis.
we have to co collect data and uh, do the experimentation. So if the collected data supports the alternative hypothesis, uh, it means that the proposed or the, the, the new landing page had a significant impact on the conversion rate. That, that's what it means. If it's not, uh, if the collected data or the experiment doesn't support it, it means that there is no, there is no sufficient evidence to, uh, 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 to reject the null hypothesis, which means it's insufficient ev evidence to conclude that the change had an effect. The change had an effect or the null hypothesis can't be rejected, right? So these are the, the basic steps in hypothesis testing. Uh, we, can, we can go them uh, step by step. So uh, the, the steps that we follow, the first thing, as I said, is construct the hypothesis. Actually, the hypothesis is constructed from the, the business objective, right? So first you need to define your goals, your objectives. And then from there, you uh, uh, set the, the hypothesis and then uh, determine the sample size, right? How many sample size would be enough to conduct this experiment? Um, it, it depends on the, the data or the experiment that you are doing. It might be, um, for example, in the case of the landing page, it might be number of users, right? And um, uh, yeah, uh, it, it depends on the, the data. And then uh, you measure the results. That means you, you perform the statistical analysis. And then from there, you, you take action, right? If, the, if changing the, the background color uh, makes or has a high significance, then you, you change your um, uh, landing page to the uh, red background, right? So you can, it's it's an iterative process uh, to get a, a good performing uh, website or landing page. You can improve uh, the, the, the font, text font might be the, the header, uh, any element that you can change on the uh, page. But we do this one by one, not everything at once. If that's the case, it's not uh, a BTC test, rather it's a multivariate test, right? Changing um, different elements at a time and doing the experiment, that's uh, a different test, a multivariate test. But in the in uh, in a B t uh, a B uh, testing, it's just only uh, changing one element at a time, or applying a treatment uh, at a time. Uh, are there any questions so far? I'm still audible. That's good. Is it clear? All right. If there is something I need to explain more, please ask. Yes, Daniel. Uh, what is the input for this AB testing? Is it a correlation analysis? Uh, we will come to that. Uh, we will have a demo. Uh, so what, what we'll do is, uh, it depends on the data. Uh, first, we will, we, we will see the category one, right? If it's uh, like version A and version B, uh, something uh, changed on that version. Uh, and if the thing that we do is categorical, we, we will uh, define what we call it the cross tab, not a correlation. Uh, and then using that, we, we will use the chi-square test to find the uh, p-value. And then we compare that p-value with the alpha, the level of significance that we want. Uh, usually it's like 0 0.05. If it is uh, less than 0 0.05, um, we will uh, reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. Yeah, we will we will see that in practical. Is that clear? Yes, yes. Okay, any other question? All 
Okay, then let's move on. All right, so as I said uh, in detail, uh, the first uh, step would be identifying the business goal, right? What's the, the, the goal of uh, your challenge for this week? You need to identify that. What do you want to um, experiment? What do you want to taste, right? So you need to identify those. Uh, for example, uh, it, it might be increasing email signups by changing the headline in the email ad, right? Uh, in your web page, you might have um, a sign up page, right? And changing the, the headline of that uh, sign up page uh, would be um, your goal. I mean, increasing the sign up by changing the headline of the email ad. Uh, another will be trying to uh, uh, different recommendation approach in order to increase sale amount. Uh, another can be test different images or headlines for image ads to increase clicks row uh, or decrease the ad spend. Uh, once you have your uh, business goal, the next step is to uh, choose your metric that you want to measure, right? So uh, the, the key metric is crucial step in order to design uh, your A-B test. Without that metric, uh, it's it's not possible to do the experiment. Uh, uh, widely used metrics uh, could be click-through rate, conversion rate, average sale, etc. Right? Something that's important for you to attain your business objective. So you need to choose uh, those uh, metric. And the next step, as I said, is stating the hypothesis. That's it. Again, another example. Uh, for example, for the email, um, uh, there is no difference in click through rate between blue button and red button, right? Uh, the, the original or the control experiment was uh, with a blue button. Now you change it into a red beta button and your null hypothesis would be there is no difference in click through rate right that's your measure between uh, or changing the blue button to a red button so the alternative hypothesis would be what there is a difference in clicking through rate between the blue uh, button and red button so you have to state your hypothesis clearly right you can relate this right your hypothesis with your metric and also with your goal right so it, it's a step-by-step -step, um, process and then you have to design the uh, a b test right uh, designing the a b test usually requires uh, different steps uh, depending on your data whether it's categorical or uh, numerical, uh, after choosing a key metric and starting uh, uh, stating the hypothesis, uh, you start to design the A-B test, starting from choosing a sample size, uh, experimentation uh, duration, right? Uh, and also you need to check uh, for normality, homogeneity, etc. especially if it's a numeric data. Um, then the final step will be analyzing the A-B testing. Uh, that means you need to choose uh, a statistical test for your metric. And that depends on, as I said, it depends on the data structure, right? There is a simple uh, tree here, uh, what statistical test you could use uh, for computing the, the, the p-values, right? Uh, if your data is discrete, right? Discrete, you you need to check. Uh, you need to ask: Do you have large sample size? If the lar the the sample size is not big, or uh, if it's small, you have to use uh, Fisher's uh, extra test. Uh, if it's large enough, if it's big, you can use the uh, Pearson chi-square test, right? Uh, if it's not discrete, if it's continuous, like 
profit margin in your case uh, you take this uh, side if you have large number of sample size you need to check variance if that variance is known you can test uh, you can take the z test uh, if it's not known you 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 should take similar variance if yes you use the student t test uh, etc uh, so it, it depends on your um, uh, mainly on your data right uh, yeah uh, any questions before we move on to the uh, demo is it clear that the steps that you need to follow mainly in your case the, the data is already given so you will simply start the uh, uh, experimentation that means you, you, you the hypothesis is already given right there is no significant um, risk with respect to something like profit margin uh, I, I really don't remember the challenge yeah any questions is it clear all right um i think it's time for them i think yeah all right uh this is a simple demo uh, how you perform the that uh, the, the a b test right and for that um we need panda for loading the data uh matplotlib if necessary i don't use the, the plotting and you need scipy from scipy.stats uh, you can get the chi-square uh, module uh, so the first thing is you need to read your data so the the idea here is we want to know uh, whether um, when somebody uh, buys a phone you recommend uh, them with to buy a cover or um i mean if 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 somebody buys a phone uh, you recommend them uh, as a, a screen guard and when somebody buys uh, a cover you recommend them uh, as um, i mean a screen guard right so we want we want to know uh, recommending a screen guard with a phone uh, performs better than recommending a screen guard with a cover that that's what it means uh, and this the purchase flag means if we recommend uh, when someone buys a phone if we recommend as the screen guard in this case uh, he didn't buy it that's what it means uh, here when he buys a cover uh, we recommend a screen guard and he bought the the the, the cover, i mean the, the screen guard so we want to know uh, if this recommendation has effect on the uh, purchase flag that that's what it means so you can do the the analysis the cleaning up etc so our objective is to check if the, the if the suggestion type has uh, a significance on the purchase flag whether it will uh, have um, a conversion rate that that that's what it means so the first thing we did is we group them we group them uh, with a suggestion type right it's like um, suggestion type with cover uh, Those who didn't buy is like 206, and those who buy is 130. So if we recommend the screen guard with a phone, uh, 258 people didn't buy it, and uh, 170 people did buy it. That, that's what it means, right? So we need to, uh, we're just checking how many 
people by the uh, sorry sorry um yeah so uh, we just need to check uh recommending the safeguard with a cover uh how many people buy the the screen guard how many didn't right so for that before we do the test we have to uh, create what you call it the uh, uh cross tab it's like a core you can no it's not a correlation but yeah it's a cross tab right so you do that pd cross tab uh between suggestion type and uh purchased uh, purchase flag right and that gives us this array right using this array we can calculate the purchase rate uh so to calculate the the purchase rate what we uh, can do is for example with a phone right uh, that's the number of people who bought the screen guard divided by the total number uh of like, yeah the total number of people who bought the the, the phone and the purchase rate for uh for the screen guard with cover is the total number who bought the screen guard uh divided by the total number of people who bought a cover right so this rate uh as you can see there is a difference right the um, recommending the safe card with a phone uh it's about 31 percent and recommending the safeguard with the cover is about 39 percent right so this is what we can see from the uh, from the data right we haven't done any hypothesis testing so what we can do is first we set our hypothesis right so what's the the null hypothesis in our case uh, there is no relation between purchase rate right we, we we are interested in the purchase rate with the recommendation type right so the null hypothesis is uh, no relation between purchase rate and recommendation type which means they are independent that that's what we are saying right they are independent so the alternative hypothesis is there is a relationship between the purchase rate and the recommendation type right which means they are dependent uh, uh, so to exactly uh, tell we are confident that there is a relation uh, shape between the purchase rate and the recommendation type we need to quantify it we need to quantify it and for that we need to uh, calculate the p-value mainly uh, the uh, chi-square contingency you pass the cross tab values uh, this these values right and then it will return the, the chi statistic and the p value uh, it also returns the expected value and the dof so if you do that uh, let me run this did i run everything oh uh, i didn't run it sorry um yeah uh so here we have uh a chi square value of 0. Point, i mean 4.37 uh 38 and the p value is 0. 0.036 right so uh the level of significance or the alpha value is usually 0. 0.05 right so we said if the p value is less than uh, the alpha value uh, we uh, say we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the uh, alternative hypothesis right so for that uh, we just compare right the probability that the difference happens due to um, randomness is 
95%, which means the error is like 0 0.05, right? If the calculated value is less than that error value, which means it's not, it's Hello. not random. Hello? Yeah, Abraham? Hello? Am I audible? Yes, okay. yes we can hear it. Yeah, now you are audible, but uh, yeah, you get back to explain the, the, the result part, the p-value. Um, yeah, here. We, we, we haven't explained it yet. We, we are just calculating yes, yes. the chi-square value and the, the p-value. Yeah, you can start from uh, there, I think. Um, yeah, so here we just simply uh, printing the alpha value and the p-value. So we compare them, right? If the p-value that's calculated from uh, chi-square contingency, if that p-value is less than, uh, yeah, if that's less than the alpha, uh, it means we are uh, going to reject the null hypothesis, right? Because it's not random that the recommendation type has um, a relationship with the purchase rate. That that's what it means. But if the p value is greater than alpha, right? Which means we are conf ninety percent, ninety five percent confident that this difference happens uh, because of randomness. That means uh, we are not going to reject the null hypothesis. That, that's what it means, right? <laughs> so if you run this, um, actually we already calculate that it's 0 0.36, which is less than uh, 0 0.05. That's this one which means we, in this case, uh, rejecting the null hypothesis, which means we are accepting the alternative hypothesis. That means there is a relationship between uh, purchase rate and recommendation type. That means they are dependent. Uh, is it clear, the, the interpretation? You calculate the p-value, and then you compare it with the alpha value. If the p-value is less than the alpha value, the alpha value, uh, it's not necessarily 0 0.05. Usually, it's 0 0.05. But sometimes, uh, you might take 0 0.01 or something even less than 0 0.05, right? It's just um, a convention. For most tests, uh, the alpha value is usually 0 0.05. And you compare that with the p-value that you get from your uh, statistical test. That, in, in our case, since it's a category, um, we use a chi-square test, right? If it's numerical, you have to use the t-test. If it's a t-test, uh, before you do the test, you need to make sure that the uh, normality of the, the data, it should be Gaussian or normal distribution, and uh, you need also to check homogeneity, and then you do the t-test. Or it depends uh, on the, the, the data you have. I hope that's clear. Um, yeah, um, let me just check the challenge document, or, or we, we, will, we, will, we will see that one later. Uh, are there any questions? Is it clear? Uh, for your project, uh, just take 0 0.05. That that's fine. All right. Uh, if it's clear, let me just stop the recording. Um,
Excuse me.